if you do the truth and are faithful, you are never abandoned, you are never alone, because God is with you. He is the closest witness to your conscience. The conscience, of course, has to be formed. So the conscience is formed by a life of faith. When you are faithful to the commandments of God, your conscience is becoming ever more um, clearer, the voice, and, and surer. Evermore you leave the, the commandments of God, the will of God, uh, in, in manifested, manifested in the commandments, then in the catechism, in the perennial truth of the church. And therefore, the, uh, you have to follow uh, these conscience well formed in Catholic faith. And then even when the majority are against you, you are with the truth and God is with you. You have so many examples of heroic examples of fidelity to the conscience. The most, one of the most important and known is St. Thomas More, uh, St. John Fisher. I mean, they were almost alone following their conscience about not compromising with a a divorce in the issue of Henry VIII's um, marriage. And then also not compromising the slightest compromise with the Catholic faith as John, as um, uh, Henry VIII um, usurped the, the powers of the church. And so <clears throat> imagine all the bishops of England, they followed and John Fisher not. And almost all the politicians followed the pressure of those times and John Thomas More no. And then after them, we had uh, thousands and more of martyrs of the English Catholics who followed the conscience of fidelity to the Holy Mass, for example. They did not um, uh, assist the Protestant Mass, as they call the Anglican. And mm, <coughs> many of them were martyred because of the, of the fidelity to also to the liturgy. And then the Irish Catholics during the penal times, they had to hide in woods, in forests, in caves. They survived uh, centuries, the Irish Catholics, following their conscience to be faithful, to uncompromising with the Catholic faith and with the Holy Mass. So this is maybe for us encouraging. <clears throat>